In one season, we 4X the amount of root extradates one of our clients' crops produced. Maximizing root extradates is one of the first things we look at doing when we start working with new farmers. In this video, I'll share with you the importance of maximizing your root extradates and exactly how to do that. So to start off with, what is a root extradate? A root extradate is what the plant produces through its roots. It is a substance filled with carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, different compounds to feed the soil biology. And so it'll take photosynthates and push them out through the root uh, into the rhizosphere, which is about a one to two millimeter zone around the roots filled with biology. Super important and it provides the plant with so many benefits. The problem with a lot of our crops today are that the plants are disconnected from its soil and from its microbiome. And so what we look at doing in our consulting program is reconnecting the plant with, it, with the soil and with its microbiology so that the whole system can work together to then supply the plant with its nutrition. Fundamental to this is the plant producing root extradates. The biggest benefit that the plant receives is that through this system, the plant pumps out carbohydrates and lipids and proteins to feed the soil biology. This is important for a few factors, but the biggest one is that feeding the soil biology then feeds the plant. So there's a process called the rhizophagy cycle where the plant then consumes microbes as a source of food. This has been suggested to supply 100% of the crop's required nutrition, but I think it's more scientifically accurate to say up to 30%. So there's some good research to say that this can support 30% of the nitrogen requirements of a crop. Um, some people suggest it can do up to 100%. We like to factor in about 30%, uh, but more importantly, be guided with the differential sap tests. So it's amazing to think about the amount of carbon a plant will release to the soil as root extradates. Of the carbon fixed through photosynthesis, the plant will release up to 80% of its photosynthates as root extradates. Now that's on the very high side. Typically it's more like 20%. On the very high end of that, when the plant has excess carbohydrates, it will then pump more of that into the soil as root extradates, mainly to feed the soil biology. The big benefits of that is that the soil biology then feeds the plant and it can also have a disease suppression effect. So this is the most important function that root extradites have and it's simply building a very robust and aggressive biology around its root zones. The next component is that the plant will release this to mycosal fungi to build stable carbon. So Dr. Christine Jones talks about how about 40% of the carbon released as root extradites end up as stable soil organic carbon. Compare this to about 8% of the above ground biomass that decomposes ends up as stable soil organic carbon. 40% of the root extra ending up as soil organic carbon is a massive conversion rate um, of that soil carbon. So not only are we feeding biology to then improve our plant health, but also building soil carbon that has so many benefits like increased infiltration rates, like increasing wet aggregate stability. So the, the aggregation of your soil, the structure of your soil, the water holding capacity of your soil, everything. It has so many functions that are so important to sustaining plant production. Another really important function of root extradates is the plant can regulate the pH of the rhizosphere. What this looks like is that the plant releases in acidic soils, it can release bicarbonates, which then react with hydrogen and form water and carbon dioxide. And it means that the zone around the root zone can be up to two units of pH higher. So which means if, if the bulk soil is um, say four, a pH of four, which is very acidic, the root zone might be sitting at a pH of six. So this can be super important for not only supporting a crop, but improving the pH of your soil. So with a say a cover crop and a very fibrous root system, you can very rapidly increase the pH of your soil using root extradates. So that is uh, increasing pH. In high pH soils, plant can release more organic acids, which then acidify the root zone back to that ideal level of around 6.5. Now, as a result of the plant feeding biology, it'll then attract in beneficial biology or microbes to then suppress disease. So it not only calls in beneficial microbes, but it can also directly suppress pathogens. And so there's two benefits here. Not only does it suppress disease, but also brings in beneficial microbes to then suppress those diseases too. Now the root extradates themselves tend to be uh, in a reduced state, or they like to reduce the minerals around them. So that means that minerals that can only be taken up in the reduced uh, stage, like iron and manganese, 
can increase their availability when you have lots of root extradites. So as a result, we can increase the nutrient availability of a lot of our trace minerals. The plant also puts out compounds which chelates these minerals, which can help then allow the plant to take up those minerals. Root extradites can also help with water retention. And so the plant can do this two ways. Firstly, the root extradites produce almost like a mucus around the root zone, which can then hold in more water. The plant can also feed, feed mycorrhizal fungi, which then produce a compound called glumalin, also a mucus type substance, which can hold onto water. So as a result, the root zone around the plant becomes more water efficient and therefore increase soil moisture. The very last one is that these root extradites can also complex heavy metals and toxins and therefore reduce their availability to the plant. And so obviously we don't want the plant taking up all these heavy metals for the us to eat. It's not good for the plant, likewise with the toxins. And so from all these benefits, increasing soil biology, making stable soil organic carbon, increasing or decreasing the pH depending on uh, your soil. So it can really drives the pH towards that ideal level. We also have disease suppression effect, super important for soil borne diseases. Number five is increasing the availability of a lot of our trace minerals. We also have increased moisture, also a reduction in toxins and heavy metals. So all of these things are super important to improving soil health, plant health, and just production in general. So the question is, how can we increase the rate of root extradition? Now, a very sick plant will still release root extradites. What we want to do are three things. We want to increase the overall amount of carbohydrates the plant has to then put out into the soil. We want to increase the proportion of those carbohydrates that the plant can put out. And then we also want to extend the length of time that the plant can put them out into. So number one is increasing the amount of photosynthates that the plant has. This can be pretty easily done. I and mean, this is what we did with our clients is a follow application targeting a few trace minerals. So they include iron, manganese, magnesium, copper, which not often uh, gets talked about, and phosphorus. So iron is used in the synthesis of, of carotenoids as well as chlorophyll. Manganese is used in water hydrolysis. Magnesium is used in the center of chlorophyll. Copper is used in photosystem one to transfer electrons, and then phosphorus is required in ATP. So all of these things are needed to increase the photosynthetic ability of the plant. It's interesting, with one of our clients, we just applied a bit of copper, and that took the BRICS levels from two all the way up to nine. So a massive increase. We looked at the differential SAP test and, and looked at all of these minerals, and it was copper that was the deficient mineral. And so a little, a single application of one mineral could be the limiting factor that massively increases the photosynthetic ability of the plant. Once we've done that, we want to then increase the amount of the photosynthates that then gets put into root extradites. And so it's all well to have a lot of photosynthates, but if these are being used up for nitrogen conversion, then we're not really pushing a lot into our uh, root. So then we want to so increase, we'll go root extradites. So the biggest one for this one is making sure we're supplying efficient forms of nitrogen fertilizer. If we're applying a lot of nitrates, the nitrate then needs to get converted into ammonium. That ammonium then needs to be converted into amino acids. So what we can do, rather than supplying nitrate, which then needs to go along this step, we either supply ammonium, which then is one step, or amino acids. Amino acids are the best. Another potential is urea, which then gives the plant a carbon rebate. But if you can get amino acids, that's the best form. The easiest and cheapest way is with microbes. So that's building up the soil biology to then supply the plant with these amino acids through the rhizophagy cycle. But even just supplying the plant with ammonium rather than nitrates could increase the amount of available energy in the plant by like 20%. So redirecting the photosynthase from converting that nitrogen into root extracts can then increase the amount of root extracts being produced. So that's a big one. And then finally, we wanna increase the amount of time as a living root. So the reason why this is important is that we might only have say a wheat plant in the ground for six months. Only four of those months is actually effective photosynthesis. So if you think of the first month, the plant's not really doing anything, it's in the seedling stage, whatever. The last month it's drying down. So really there's only four or so months, probably less of effective time the plant is photosynthesizing at its best ability. If we increase the amount of living roots in the ground, then we can increase the amount of root extracts being put out. So that's things like cover crops, pasture cropping, even intercropping, 
where we have more roots, more plants growing across the whole year. Increasing the amount of photosynthesis and therefore the root extradates across the whole year, as well as the amount, and making sure that a lot of those root extradates actually go into the ground can really then stimulate the amount of biology in your soil. This is really how you build soil health. It's not by applying calcium or biochar or all these other things. It is making sure the plant increases its photosynthetic ability and then pumps that into the soil. If this sounds interesting to you and you want to be able to increase your plant's health to then increase the amount of root extracts it produces so you can feed your biology and increase soil organic carbon, come speak to us. Uh, you can get started with a free regenerative consult and we can go from there. My name's Steel. Cheers.